All right, everybody. We are ready for the NBC game of the week. I'm going to have to make sure I can get everything fit in here properly. Since we are at Chicago, I decided to go with the Stratomatic mat that came with the game, the, the Wrigley Field. But I'm trying to figure out how to best do the dice tray and everything else so that I don't block off third base. I guess that's the best I can do with that. Uh, there you see your bullpen and benches and your line score. So hopefully, actually, I'm going to leave this here until somebody gets on third base. Maybe I'll do it that way. I'll do it here until uh, until it gets on uh, until somebody gets on third base. Then I'll move it. Uh, let me make sure that the focus is okay. Don't want anything messed up with that. That seems to be all right. I do have the score sheet here in case you're curious. So historical game: the Cubs beat the Pirates ten to nine. Slugfest. And the first thing we're going to do is check the weather and see if the wind is blowing out at Wrigley or blowing in at Wrigley. Interesting thing for Stratomatic, they do the weather is good, bad, and average, but there's no wind, um, you know, nothing to account for the wind, I should say. Hello, uh, Kenyon and Tuscuni. Welcome aboard. And anybody else I might have missed, now that I've got it on my, on my computer, it looks like everything is fitting fairly well. I might even be able to move down a little bit to get a little closer to the cards. See if I can do that and not lose anything. Hello, Brian B. How are you doing? Hopefully this is not rigged, as some games we see might be uh, rigged. We shall see. So I think, I think we're okay now. I think everything is in view. Uh, there's a slight glare right on the pitcher's mound. I don't know if I can get rid of that because I want the lights to be able to so I can see what's going on. Uh, but first things first, starting pitchers, Ferguson Jenkins for the Cubbies. He was 14 and 16 this particular season. Not very good. 3.89 ERA. Nelson Bryles will be his opponent, 14 and 13 with a 2.85 ERA. So just initially on the first look, uh, it looks like the advantage is to Pittsburgh, but that's why you play the game. Hello, Chuck. How you doing? Tabby is here, but uh, luckily she's being quiet. Gracie, I had to put her in the bedroom and put on some jazz music for her because she was whining too much, and I, didn't, I just couldn't deal with that at the moment. So when you got an old dog, that's what happens. All right, so let's do the weather effects. Super advanced weather effects, 1973. Chicago, Wrigley Field. We are in April still. It's a day game in April. So we're under this grouping right here. 1 to 7 will be good. 8 to 14 will be average. And 15 to 20 will be bad. That is a 17. So we have bad weather. Still not bad, though. 11 uh, Singles are 1 to 11 for lefties. 1 to 8 for righties. Home runs are 1 to 3 for lefties. 1 to 11 for righties. Now, I thought Wrigley Field was a symmetrical ballpark, but maybe that has the wind is factoring into that where it's easier for a right-hander to hit a home run than it is a left-hander. I don't know, um, but I'll write these factors down on the score sheet so that I have them. So for singles, lefties are an 11. Righties are a, an N8. For home runs, so singles favors lefties, home runs favors righties. For lefties, it is 3, and for righties, it is 11. Okay, so that has now been taken care of. Yes, the friendly confines of Wrigley Field. So just as an update to the channel, what will be going forward aside from this, there will be two other projects going on at the same time, but they're there are things that aren't t terribly time-consuming, so I think I can handle all three of them. They will be on three different days of the week. So starting this coming Monday, two days from today, we will have Manic Monday. And the first game from Manic Monday will be the Chicago Cubs at the Los Angeles Dodgers, 1976, the day that Rick Monday saved the American flag. I intended to do that in APA, but I have an original APA set for 76, so it does not have all the players. And lo and behold, Steve Stone, starting pitcher, was missing. So I'm actually going to switch that game over to payoff pitch. So that will be a payoff pitch game that will premiere at noon on Monday. I'm going to record it either tonight or tomorrow. 
And then starting on Friday, coming up this Friday, it'll be Fictional Friday, another season of the Buffalo Bees with Kip Scary and Ronnie Robinson. Buffalo Bees, History Maker Baseball, 54-game schedule. I'm going to play the first game of each series. So there's 18 different series. So it's going to be 18 videos throughout. And we'll tell a story, or, or I'll do the best I can at telling a story. That's kind of my branch off into the fictional world to kind of be creative and do your own thing. So anything's liable to happen with that. And, of course, on Saturdays, you've got the game of the week. Now, next Saturday, I will not be here. I have a family commitment next Saturday. Should be the last one for a while. So next Saturday's game will be a premiere probably at 12 o'clock between Oakland and Baltimore from the Oakland Coliseum. All right, just want to get those little things out of the way. All right, so Ferguson Jenkins taking those warm-up tosses and leading off for the Pittsburgh Pirates is Vic Davalio. There you see, again, the lineups are here with the benches and the bullpen. So full slate of people there to choose from if you are the manager. Chicago Cubs colored dice, the blue and the white, with, of course, the Cubs are trimmed in red, so we got the red D20. All right, I'm going to go ahead and roll the D20 all the time to save some room or save some time. So let's get this ball game rolling. Vic Davalio against and let me make sure that uh, before I start that everything is copacetic I think it is but without me knowing for sure let's see what we got here it looks like everything is in view as best I can tell might need to move this over just a hair that way to make sure no rolls show up unattained but anyway I think we're good to go Pittsburgh Pirates and the Chicago Cubs. I have let the Stratomatic computer sim everything so far, but we're still so early in the season, so given a standings thing is not really relevant at this point. All right, Ferguson Jenkins to Davalio are underway, 5-9 against the lefty. That is a fly to center field, and that is hauled in out there by Rick Monday. Speaking of uh, Rick Monday flag day, there you go. He makes the catch on Davalio, one away. Next up is Manny Sanguin. He is in an unfamiliar right field position in this game, not catching. And he's terrible. He's a four with a plus one arm and an E22. So not sure what Danny Murtaugh was thinking there, but that's what they got him. So that's what we're going to play. We're playing it as it lies, like they say in golf. Play it as it lies. So we're doing as played. Jenkins, 1-5 to Sanguin. That's a ground ball to second and handled over there by... Second baseman Glenn Beckert, two up and two down. So Jenkins off to a good start for very good hitter Al Oliver. I would say he's in the Hall of Very Good. You know he's not in the Hall of Fame. He's definitely in the Hall of Very Good. One of the most professional hitters I've ever seen. Maybe doesn't get the accolades he may deserve. I don't know. 3-9, and he's going to fly it to left field. Just missed a ballpark home run. 3-9 is a fly to left and put away out there by the left fielder Billy Williams, and it's a 1-2-3 inning for Ferguson Jenkins. So how about that? He gets off to a great start. Cubs go uh, get the Pirates to go down in order, 1-2-3. And hold on, I've got a call coming in from downstairs, so one moment. I'll be right back. Okay, sorry about that. We had some animal issues with Gracie the dog. I brought her up here. Hopefully she'll be quiet. We shall see. 
That's what happens when you go live. You run into potential problems. All right, so Rick Monday will lead it off against Nelson Bryles to get it started. That's a 3-9, and Monday's going to fly to center field as well. Flies to his counterpart out there, Al Oliver, and there's one away. Hello, Larry. How you doing? Hello, P. F. L. Q. R. Trying to catch everybody as best I can. Trying to catch up on the chat. All right, here's Glenn Beckard. One nine for Beckard, and that is a single, solid single for Glenn Beckard. Oh, now she's making noise again. I don't know what she wants. I've tried everything. Just have to hope she calms down. Beckard's an East Steeler. He will not be going in. All right, we can't deal with that, so I've got to pause again. Sorry about that. All right, going from a feline delay to a canine delay, but stuff happens. All right, so Becker, like I said, was on first. He's not a very good runner. They're not even going to hold him on. He's definitely not trying to steal. Don't want to take the bat out of Billy Williams' hands. However, now we will roll for the Havoc and nothing going on, so no pickoffs or anything. 5-12 against a lefty. Ground ball pitcher X. Bryles is a 3-E-7. 3-E-7 for a pitcher. 3 and a 2. That's bad news for a pitcher. A 3 and a 2 is an SI-1. So it's single 1. That's a 13. And Bryles is an E-7. There is, there's a 12, but no 13 there. So it's just going to be an infield single. Infield single for Billy Williams. And now two on and one out for Joe Pepitone. As Bryles in first inning jam. That's a two chance of a balk or a pass ball. We're checking for pass ball ratings. And the catcher for the Sox is Milt May. And his pass ball rating is a two. So if we roll a two. No, nope, no two. No two. Hold on, Gracie. Sit still. No two, so no pass ball. Sorry about the noise. Grace. All right. All right, hold on. I got to do something. Now you know why I don't like to do live live streams. <laughs> Because on recordings I can record, I can control all this. All right, all right. Three six for Pepitone. That's a pop out to second base, out number two. Out number two. Pretty much have to pet her between every at bat. I think just calm her down. She doesn't know where she wants to be, whether it's downstairs, upstairs, inside, outside. She doesn't can't make up her mind, apparently. But when you're 17 year old, that's pretty pretty old for a dog, so I guess if I get to be that age and a human equivalent, I won't know what to do either. It's Bryles. 3-7. That's a ground ball to the pitcher. And Bryles will throw it away, or to first base rather, to end the inning. So no runs, two hits, no errors, and two left. At the end of one, no score from Wrigley Field. And that's one of the good things about next week's being recorded is I will be able to edit all this stuff out, and you won't have to hear anything. It'll be smooth transition. So, All right, Richie Hepner will lead things off. I've got Gracie sitting right next to me where I can pet her, so maybe that is helping her out some. Maybe she has... Uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, where you're left alone or whatever, anxieties, separation anxieties or something? I don't know. I'm not a animal expert by any means. All right, here's Hebner. 
Six five against a lefty on Ferguson Jenkins is trouble. That's a one to ten home run. That's a five. Richie Hebner says bye bye Fergie, and that ball is out of here. Richie Hebner, win or no win. Look at it again. Six five on Ferguson Jenkins. I'll put it up here close so you can see it. Six five on Ferguson Jenkins. Six five on Ferguson Jenkins. You can see it. A one to ten is a home run. That's a five, and he does have normal power, so replay says it is a good home run. So the Pirates take a one nothing lead. And here is Big Bob Robertson, first baseman. 1-7. He's going to walk, so that's a typical result after a home run. Tends to be a walk, and there you go. Bob Robertson walks. He is slow as you can be, so he will not be held on. That'll bring up Milt May. Jenkins could use a double play about now. Milt May is a double play candidate for sure. 3-7, but instead he's going to single to center field. As slow as Bob Robertson is, he will hold at second base. But Jenkins now in trouble after getting the first three out in the first. He's running into some issues. And that will bring up Dave Cash. Kind of low in the order for Cash. You expect him to hit higher up in the order, but it's just the way they did it today. Jenkins to Cash. 4-9 against a right-hander. It's a fly ball, right field B. One away. Now, you might be wondering, can the guy get to third base? That's something I haven't got around to doing the Stratomatic University thing yet to get that going again. But I got the rule book in front of me to explain it. There's a B question mark, and there is a plain old B. So with the fly ball B, can only score from third. This is on fly ball be to right field only. A runner at second may advance with this calculation. That's an advance. Let's check super advanced. I know about advanced. Let me check super advanced real quick. Uh, it doesn't really say in super advanced. I'm looking at the rule book and it's not showing me. Unless I'm just missing it. I'm in section 14 on page 5 of the rule book. Oh, it says use advanced rules with this addition. Okay, so we are using the advanced rules. So a run on second to fly ball B. Run on second may advance with this calculation. The base runner rating, the outfield arm rating, and plus 2. So we need to calculate that. So the run rating of Bob Robertson, though, is not very good, obviously. He's pretty poor. He only runs at a 10. And the right field arm is Jose Cardinal, who's a minus 2, makes him an 8. The plus 2 makes him a 10. So it'll only be a 50-50 chance. And with eh, you'd like to get him to third with one out, but you don't want to get him thrown out either. So they're just going to hold him there. If he was a better base runner, they would have tried it. But without being a better base runner, they're not going to mess with it. So Gene Alley is your batter. Maybe should have took the chance. Well, two. Chance for a... Pass ball again. It's got to be a one or a two. There's no pass ball. It's blocked by Milt May. Jenkins, 4-6 against the right-handed alley. 4-6 is a single to right field. And again, and now I'm going to have to move my dice tray a little bit to fit the runner at third base. Now the bases are full. It's a pirate on every plank. And the bases are loaded for the pitcher. Nelson Bryles, who is using pitcher hitting card number three. Pitcher hitting card number three. Yeah, Tuscuni inside pitch is a wonderful game. So is Strat. I can, you know, both are right there together. One and two. One, one A, one B maybe. I don't... All right, Jenkins. They both have their different advantages and disadvantages. So... See what Jenkins has here. We got a 3-3 three, three for the pitcher, and that is a ground ball first base A, which is going to be a double play, 3-6-3. Three, three. So maybe he should have had him bunt. I don't know, but he's a pretty good hitter. So Plus was already one out, so that's going to end the inning. The Pirates are going to leave him loaded on that 3-6-3 three, three double play, and Fergie gives up just the one run. The home run to Hebner was it. Pirates do get three hits, no errors, and they left them loaded. So that could that's possibly something that can come back to get them later in the game.
But it is one nothing Pittsburgh as we go to the top or bottom of the second, rather. And Jose Cardinal. Jose Cardinal. No, uh, Jeff, on a fly ball B with a run on third, it's an automatic sack fly. Fly ball B question mark is the only one at third that requires the run rating. But a fly ball B with a runner at second to go to third, that requires the run rating. So, Runner automatically, automatically scores on a B question mark with a runner at third and less than two outs. That is correct. All right, Jose Cardinal to lead it off. 1-6 for Cardinal, and that's a 1-12 to 12 double. That's a one, so Jose Cardinal, a leadoff double, and back come the Cubs as they are looking to get something done. Cardinal will not steal, but he will be held because he's a good runner. He runs at a 16, so they will have to hold him on, which means the second baseman, Cash, is responsible. Nothing on the Havoc. That's correct. Bryles, 6-12. I'm not doing pitcher injuries, so I'm not going to worry about checking the injury thing. Pitcher X. Pitcher X. He's a 3, E7. 3 and a 7 on the pitcher. Let's see if he gets to it. 3 and a 7. He is a G3, so that means the runner's going to advance to third automatically. That's a 12. But on an E7, E7, that 12 is sitting right there, playing his day. On an E7, that three twelve, that number 12 is sitting right there. There you see it. So it is an E1. So it is an E1, and it boots it by, it's booted by Bryles. E1, and that's going to put runners at the corners with nobody out, and Don Kessinger, the batter, and Bryles in trouble. Ferguson Jenkins, who is not a good hitter, using pitcher hard, hitting, hard, hitting card number one, is on deck. Nothing happening there. So runners are at the corners. Nobody out. Infield playing back for the double play. They need outs. Bryles, 5-6 against the switch hitter being left. That's not good either. One's a triple. Anything else is a double. That's a double. There are no stars, so this, we'll see if the runner can score. He was being held. Actually, Hunley was not being held because he's not a good runner. He runs at a 12. Was not being held. Makes him a 13. Center fielder arm, Oliver's a zero, but with nobody out, they're not going to take a chance. They're just going to hold him there at second base, or at third base, rather. So RBI double for Kessinger scores Cardinal. Hunley takes third, and now runners are at second and third. Still nobody out. Infield now is in for Ferguson Jenkins. Now, do you dare do a squeeze bunt? I don't think so with nobody out. You don't want to run yourself out of an inning. If Ferguson strikes out, so be it. Infield is in. Riles, 4-9 against the right hand. It's a one for a single. Anything else is a liner to third, and that's going to be an out. So we hit it hard, but right at the third baseman, Hebner, who snags it. And getting back is Hunley to avoid being doubled off. So one out, runners at second, third. Infield still in for Rick Monday. Monday flew to center his first chance up. And nothing going on there. Bryles to Monday, 6-8 lefty. That is a ground ball shortstop B. So with the infield in, let's look at our super advanced chart. Runners at second and third. Check it out right here. Runners at second and infield in, second and third, and we got a B, which is a number seven on the chart. Number seven on the chart says batter safe, lead runner is out, other runners advance. So they got the runner at the plate. So that means he's going to be out of there 6-2. to two. As the shortstop alley throws to Milt May covering, or blocking the plate, rather. And Hunley is out 6-2 to two on the fielder's choice. Going to third is Kessinger. And at first is Rick Monday on the fielder's choice. But now there are two outs. Monday will not be held. Two outs and Glenn Beckert is your batter. Still 1-1 one one is our score. Nothing on the Havoc. That was an 18. I, I, with the runner on third, it's kind of hard for me to put this tray down as far as I would like. 
but I'll make sure everything shows up before I move on. 1-7 for Beckard. That is a solid single. Solid single to center field. That's going to score the runner. We'll see if, if uh, Mundy will take third or not. Since there are two outs, Kessinger will score. Al Oliver has a zero arm. Mundy was not being held. So he's a 16, becomes a 17. With two outs, becomes a 19. They're going to just let Mundy go to third and keep the runner Beckard at first base. So defense will not risk it. They want to keep the other runner out of scoring position. Beckard not going to be held on first. And here comes Billy Williams. The Cubs now lead it 2-1 to one, as they've come all the way back. Well, all the way, they're only down by one. But they are back, as they say. Billy Williams. That's a 6-5. Hopefully that shows up on the screen. I'm going to wait here and make sure the roll shows up on the screen. It does. 6-5. Lefty. 6-5 is the ground ball shortstop X. Nobody's responsible for holding anybody on. So Mr. Alley will keep his full defensive uh, prowess, and he is a 4-E-17. So a 4-E-17 to 4 could be problematic. We'll see. 4 and a 5. 4 and a 5 is an SI-1, so it's going to be through for a base hit. That's an SI-1, and that's a total of 9, and he was an E-17. There is no 9 there, but it is going to be a single SI-1, so base hit for Billy Williams. Scoring is Monday. Cubs now lead it 3-1. to one. Inning still continues for Joe Pepitone. So Gene Alley not able to get to that one. Snuck it right by him. Nothing happening on the Havoc roll. Here's Bryles. 1-9 to Pepitone. And that is a 1-12 dinger. That's a 15, though. So it's a fly to the left to end the inning. Pepitone just missed it. Just missed a three-run home run. But as it is, the Cubs do score three. They do it on one, two, three, four hits. There was one big error. And they left two on base. So at the end of two, it is Chicago three and Pittsburgh one. But Joe Pepitone could have made it a lot worse. But fortunately for Pittsburgh, he did not. But it is going to give Ferguson Jenkins a lead to protect. And he will be facing the top of the order, Vic Davalio. Davalio flew to center his first time up. That's a 5-9 against a lefty, and that's going to be a fly to right field hauled in by Cardinal. And there's one away. One down, and that sends up Manny Sanguian, the right fielder. Seems strange to say that, but that's where he's playing. 4-2, and that's a ballpark home run chance. And the ballpark home runs for right-handers are 1 to an 11. He does have normal power. That's a 5, and it is gone. Manny Sanguian. Just clubs one down the left field line, and all Billy Williams can do is look at it. It goes in that basket right above the ivy, and the Pirates have cut the lead in half. It's down to 3-2 to two, thanks to Manny Sanguian's bomb. Ballpark home run there. The wind blowing out a little bit helped him out. And here is Al Oliver. 112 for Oliver. That's a hit-by-pitch plus injury. Now, I, I said I'm not going to do injury for pitchers, so I, I guess that to be consistent, I shouldn't do injury for batters either, so we're just going to let it go since it is as played. Uh, so Al Oliver will get the single. I'm sorry, the hit by pitch, not the single, the hit by pitch. So he is plunked after the home run. You wonder if that was – Pirates are wondering if uh, Fergie got a little mad there. We don't know. Uh, Al Oliver, not much of a base-stealing threat, so he will not be held. Richie Hebner is your batter. Nothing going on with that. Jenkins to Hebner. That's a 4-9, and that's a ground ball first base B, so it's a fielder's choice, 3-6. to six, As Pepitone will throw to Kessinger for the force on Oliver, and Hebner is the new base runner at, second, at first base with two outs, but he's even a worse base runner, so he's definitely not going to be held. And Bob Robertson is your batter. Nothing on the Havoc roll. We get a 2-4 for Robertson, and that is a walk. So the inning will continue. Two-out walk to Robertson keeps the inning going. The Pirates have two on without the benefit of a hit. And it's going to bring up Milt May, and nobody's being held on base. Nothing going on with the Havoc roll. Here is Jenkins to May. 
five eight against the lefty. It's a ground ball, second base. A would have been a double play, but we'll just say that the second baseman Beckard flips to to Kessinger for the force. Call it four to six fielder choice to end the inning. So a run on just the one hit, the home run by Sanguian. No errors, and they left two on base. So we go to the bottom of the third. It's now three to two in favor of the Cubs as the Pirates chip away. Both Pirate runs are solo homers by Hebner and Sanguian. Cubs have earned theirs by running around the bases. And now, now Ron Santo. And I believe, did he finally get, I think he finally got in the Hall of Fame on the Veterans Committee, did he not? Ron Santo, I think he did. I know there was a lot of question whether he belonged in the Hall or not, but I think he got voted in by the Veterans Committee. But I could be wrong on that. I could be thinking about somebody else. But I think he's in the Hall. Riles, 5-4, and that is a ballpark single check. Against the right hand, it's a 1-8. to eight. That's an 11, so it will be a liner to shortstop. As Gene Alley picks it up for one away. And that'll bring up Jose Cardinal. So that time the ballpark took the hit away. Bryles, 3-9 to Cardinal. Struck him out. That's out number two. And believe it or not, that's the first strikeout of the game for either pitcher. Took him three innings to get it. But nobody has struck out until that one there. And Cardinal was the victim. Here's Randy Hundley. Two, uh, three seven rather for Hundley, and he's going to fly to center field. Al Oliver will put that away, and it's a one two three inning for Nelson Bryles. So after that rough second inning, he comes back with a one two three third, and after three complete, it is three to two, in favor of the Cubbies. Or if you're a UCLA fan, favor the Bruins. All right, so now we've got Cash, Alley, and Bryles due up for the Pirates here in the fourth inning. Bryles and Jenkins both have seven for their fatigue, so they're nowhere near being fatigued. Uh, Tim Klee, baseball fan, if I didn't say hello, hello to you. I'm sorry if I missed that. Thought I did, but probably didn't. 3-7 uh, for Cash is a ground ball short, one away. Kessinger takes care of Cash, one down. Brings up Gene Alley. Gene Alley. Santo did make the Hall of Fame. All right, thank you, Brian. 3-9, and that's a walk. So Gene Alley draws the one-out walk, which will now set up a bunt opportunity for Mr. Bryles. He's not going to hit into a double play like he did last time, unless he bunts into one. Bryles' bunt rating is an A, but the corners are in, making him a B. So we go to our bunt chart. Super advanced bunt chart with the B. Rolling the three dice. The white die will tell us who fields it. The other die will say what happens. All right, that's a 5, which means it is fielded by the first baseman. That's a 10. He's a B. 10 and a B is a pop-up. So 10 and a B says pop-up. Pop. Pop-up. Batter pops up. Runner holds th their bases. So he popped it up to first base. And uh, at least it's not a double play. But it is going to be caught there by... Pepitone for out number two. Pepitone thought about letting it drop and see if they can get a cheat double play, but he thought better of it. And I guess instinct took over, and he just fielded it. So there you go. Davileo, top of the order, back up, and Jenkins with the delivery. 2-5, and that is a fly to right field, and Cardinal puts it away to end the inning. Davileo flies to right field for the second time. He's got he's 0 for 3 with three fly outs. So for the Pirates, no runs, no hits, no errors, and one left on the walk. Go to the bottom of the fourth. Still three to two. Favor of the Cubbies. So after a little bit of explosive inning in the second, it's kind of settled down just a bit. It'll be Kessinger, Jenkins, and Monday due up for the Cubs. We get a 1-9, and that's a ground ball to short. Gene Alley takes care of it. One shortstop taking care of another one. One down for the pitcher, Ferguson Jenkins, pitcher in card number one. But it's on the bat, uh, pitcher card, 4-8. Four, 4-8 eight. Four, eight is a strikeout. Second strikeout for Bryles. 
Jenkins has yet to get one. Here's Rick Monday. Monday is 0 for 2 with a fielder's choice. He did score a run. 5 10 against the lefty, and that is a ballpark single check. And it's a 1 to an 11. That's a 13, though, so it's going to be a. I'm going to keep the original roll in this one since nobody's on base. It's a fly to right because I just don't want 15,000 lineouts in my score, sharp, score sheet. So three up and three down go the Cubbies, and we go to the fifth inning with the score still three to two. Three to two. And for anybody that came in late, Manic Monday starts in two days, and it will be payoff pitch. 1976 Cubs and Dodgers, the day that Rick Monday saved the flag. And it'll be on payoff pitch. It'll premiere at noon Eastern for lunchtime entertainment. I'll probably record it tonight. <clears throat> All right, Manny Sanguina, who homered his last time up. 210 for Sanguina, and this time he's got he's not going to homer. He's going to get a base hit. That's a three, so it will only be a single. One to two would have been a double, but he'll settle for the single. And Sanguian, two for three. Not a good base runner, will not be held. And here is Al Oliver. One thing I forgot to mention, uh, Cubs pitcher-catcher combo is a, pl is a plus one total. You got the plus three from Fergie, minus two from Hundley makes it a plus one. For the Pirates, it's Nelson Browles. It combo is a minus one. Bryles is a minus two, and Milt May is a plus one. So just in case you might, I forgot to mention that earlier, but that's what we're working with if, if there's going to be any attempted steals. All right, Fergie Jenkins to Oliver, 110. That's a ballpark single check. Ballpark single check, that's a 13, though, so it's going to be a pop-up to second or a line-out to second, but it's pretty much the same either way you go. I'll call it a pop-out to second. Why not? That's out number one. Both have the same effect. So here's Richie Hebner. Hebner homered for the first run of the game. Also hit into a fielder's choice. 3-6. Three, 3-6 six. Three, six is a ballpark home run blast for, for Hebner. And for lefties, it's only a 1-3. to three. That's an 8, so it'll be a deep fly to right. And that'll be out number 2. So that time the wind blowing in a bit cost him. There's two away for Bob Robertson. Robertson has walked twice. 2-5, and he almost walked again. But this time he's going to be a strikeout victim and the first one for Ferguson Jenkins on the game. So no runs, a hit, no errors, and one left. We go to the bottom of the fifth, still 3-2, to two, nip and tuck. Pirates and Cubs, but that is the first strikeout of the game for Jenkins. Took him five innings to get it. He did strike out 170 batters in 271 innings in the real world. So now we go to the bottom of the fifth. And that will bring up Glenn Beckert to lead things off. Beckert has singled twice. He's two for two. Bryles, 4-9. And that's going to be a one for a single. Anything else, he lines the third. So that will be a line out to Richie Hebner for out number one. For Billy Williams, and this is my old Stratomatic mat. I'm the one I just bought with the new with the new game parts. I'm not gonna, I don't want to mess that up, taping stuff all over the place. So I'm keeping that for special occasions. This is the older board, so I don't mind if that gets a little roughed up. It's already been through the ringer here. You can see it's got a scratch, a little divot here, and there's some scratches up there. So this is for in use, not for display. Two seven for Billy Williams. That's a straight out single. So Billy Williams gets a one-out single, and he is three for three on the game, three singles. Again, not much of a base runner, so he will not try to go anywhere. And Joe Pepitone is your batter. He's 0 for 2. He's popped a second and flew to left. Infield looking for the double play. 2-11, and that's a hit by pitch again. Not going to be an injury involved, but it's just a hit by pitch, and you wonder if that's maybe retaliation for the hit by pitch where they hit uh, Al Oliver. I don't know if that was any kind of retaliation on that or not. Probably not, because you don't want to give an extra base runner. But the thought might have been there. So here comes Ron Santo, runner at first and second. One out. Double play would be sweet now for Nelson Bryles if he can turn it or get it turned. 
2-7, and right on cue, the infield's not in. The plus doesn't, the super advanced, the plus is not affected. That is a double play. All these hits in column two, in column two, all these hits in column two for Santo, but the seven is a ground ball second base A. And with in super advanced, that plus is irrelevant unless the infield's in. The infield's not in, so it's a double play. 4-6-3, just what the doctor ordered if you're Nelson Bryles, and the inning is over. Cubs miss an opportunity maybe to add to the lead. No runs, a hit, no errors, and one left. We go to the sixth. It is still 3-2 to two as the pitching has somewhat settled in, as as the defense. Top of the sixth, and Fergie steps back up. <laughs> yeah, Tim, I don't, I, I really use, I like using the real old-fashioned strap board because it's smaller and everything fits better. But since the game was today in Wrigley, rather than use the history maker field of Wrigley, I thought it might be better to use the strap version. So I pull it out once in a while. I mean, it's okay. It's not as good as uh, the new one I bought uh, a couple months ago with, when I bought all the seasons and the games, uh, game su supplies and, and whatnot. So here's Milt May. 1-5 for May. That's a ground ball to first. Pepitone will step on the bag himself. One away. Easy out there for Fergie. Brings up Cash. Jenkins, 2-7 to Cash. That's a solid single for Dave Cash. And he is... I always thought he was a decent runner, but his stealing is not very good. He stole two bases, got caught five times, and he's automatically out nine through 12 trying to get a jump. Actually, two. Look at this card of Dave Cash. This is somebody that has speed but can't steal bases. He is automatically caught stealing on a two or a nine through 12. That is, let me see if I can get this focused in here. doesn't look like it's focused too good. Let's see if I can bring it down. Here we go. Maybe right there if I can get it settled here. Come on, sit still. Sit still for me. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. Come on. Get in there. It's hard to do it while I'm looking at the computer, too. There you go. See, a 2 and a 9 through 12, he gets caught stealing automatically. So, not going to mess with that at all. Even though he's a good base runner, he's not going to be held or they could hold him to try to cut down his base running otherwise. So they will hold him, actually. They are going to hold him not for the steal threat, but because of the threat of um, going from first to third on a hit and so forth. So they, they will hold him on. I don't know if that messed up my focus or not. Let's see. Sometimes putting stuff in front of the phone does that to me. But cash is aboard. And I'll bring up Gene Alley. He will be held. Like I said, not only does it keep him from trying to get a cheap steal in, but it also keeps him going from first to third, or at least lessens the opportunity. Jenkins, nothing happened there. So here's Gene Alley. He is singled and walked. 4-6. He will single again to right field. And by holding him on, that's going to slow him down a bit. We'll see. He is a 16, but being held on is a 15. Going from right field, you add two, makes him a 17. And the right fielder arm Cardinal is a minus two, is a 15. So one to 15, they're going to send him to third. But if he goes to third, Allie's going to, if they throw through to third, Allie takes second base automatically. And I think they want to keep the tying run out of scoring position. So they're going to let him go because the odds just aren't in their favor. And they want to keep the double play in order with the pitcher Bryles coming up. So runners are at the corners. With one out and Nelson Browse, your batter, you could do all sorts of strategies here with runners on the corners. Could be a safe, a safety uh, bunt or a sacrifice bunt without the runner on third, just trying to move the runner to second. You could do that and keep the runner at third. You could do a suicide squeeze. You could let him hit away. Um, he does have some singles here. Could get singles off of Ferguson Jenkins' card. It's all sorts of possibilities. All right, so we're going to go ahead and let him swing away, I think. So he's going to swing away and see what happens. The infield is a double play depth. 
four eight against a right hander, and that is a strikeout. So Ferguson Chicken is not tired yet, so the strikeout will stand. Two down, but Vic Davalio still has a chance to bring home the tie and run. Runner on first is Alley, and he is not being held on, so nobody's holding anybody on. Nothing there. Alley of uh, Davalio is flown out three times. He's 0 for 3. 5 6. This time he will strike out. It's a straight up strikeout from Ferguson Jenkins. So Jenkins bows up and strikes out the last two batters he faces to end the inning. No runs, two hits, no errors, and two left. We go to the bottom of the six, still three to two. Favor of the Cubbies. So the Pirates miss a golden opportunity. And now the Cubs looking to add on to this. Jose Cardinal is going to be your batter. Cardinal doubled and scored in the second, struck out in the third. 3-7, he will fly to center. Al Oliver is there. One down for Randy Hundley, the catcher. Hundley reached on an error by the pitcher Bryles and then flew to center. He's 0 for 2. 111, and this, look at this. Randy Hundley, it's a straight up home run, but it's a ballpark home run. So it's a 1 to an 11. That's a 10. It doesn't matter. It is gone. Long and gone there for Hundley. You could not rob home runs at Wrigley Field, even if, even if the situation said we could. You can't do it because the walls are too high. So it is gone. And all the left fielder, Davileo, could do is look up at the basket. And Hundley, known for his defense, but here he plops one out of there. Makes it a 4-2 to two game, and now Nelson Bryles in trouble. Bullpen activity for the Pirates might start to loom here as Ramon Hernandez, a left-hander, is loosing in the pen. Here's Kessinger. 5-12, switch hitter batting left. 5-12 is ground ball pitcher X. He's already made one error. See if he can avoid it this time. 3-E-7. Three and a three is going to get through for a hit, I do believe. I'll double check it. Three and a three is an SI1. That is a 13. And we saw the 12 was an error, not a 13. So, but it is going to be a base hit for Kessinger. And that's the third time that Mr. Bryles has failed on defense. He's given up two hits and then made an error. So Kessinger will be held on with Jenkins coming up, who's looking to bunt. Jenkins is a A bunter, turns into a B bunter. B bunter and a 5. And a 1 means it went back to the pitcher. So a 5 on the bunt. On a B, 5 says sacrifice. Good sacrifice. And the 1, of course, is to the pitcher. So it is a good sacrifice. That will move Kessinger to second base. Sacrifice, it goes 1 to 4. Two outs now. But Monday is a chance to drive home an insurance run. First base is open, but I don't think you want to walk in and pitch to Beckard. Beckard's already got two hits. So they're going to go ahead and pitch to Monday. Take their chances. Bryles, 2-10 against Monday. That's a ballpark single check. And for singles, it's a 1-11. to an 11. That's a 3. It's a base hit, but it's just an SI1. So only one star, which means Monday, even with two outs, cannot score. I'm sorry, uh, Kessinger. So the single is there, puts runners on the corners with two down. Monday will not be held at first base. And Beckard is your batter. Hernandez is ready to come in. If, they, if he loses Beckard and they go to Williams, we will have a new pitcher in the ball game. So we'll see. Nothing going on there. Riles to Beckard, 6-7. Six, 6-7 seven. Six, seven is the ground ball, second base X. Nobody's being held, so second baseman Cash will keep his defense, which is 3-E-21. So a big chance here for Cash. He's got to make this play to prevent the run. Three and a two, he didn't do it. Three and a two is definitely going to be a base hit. It's an SI-2, actually, which sends the runner to third. That's a 13, and he is an E-21 at second base. And there is a 13. Unbelievable. Right smack dab, right smack dab at the E21 is at 13 sitting right there. So it is an SI2 and an error, which means the run's going to score, and Beckert will take third.
or take second rather. So RBI single brings home Kessinger. Mundy takes third on the hit, and then he scores on the E4 from Cash. So Cash was not money there. Second error of the game for the Pirates. And that's going to be it for Mr. Bryles, although he deserved a better fate than that. And he's still not over, but the defense has let him down. So Bryles is out of there. He is done. And the Pirates will turn, over, turn it to Ramon Hernandez, left-hander. So Hernandez is your first man out of the bullpen, facing the left-hander Billy Williams. Cubs, though, have two runs in. Make it three runs, rather. They have three runs in to lead it six to two. And they're looking to pile on and make it worse. Run on second. Uh, that's a two, so it's a chance of a balk or a pass ball. I'm sorry, balk or a wild pitch. That's a two. Balk or pass ball, rather. So his balk rating is a five. So one to five, he balks. And he does. So how about that? Ramon Hernandez enters the game, and the first thing he does is balk. So he balks the runner to third base. Unbelievable. A little nervous there, apparently. Hernandez, 4-6 lefty on lefty is a ground ball to second. That's going to end the inning. But damage done. Three runs are in. Two of them are earned. One is not. They're all charged to Mr. Nelson Bryles. So he is definitely on the losing end unless there's a big rally that goes on. And Ferguson Jenkins has been given a big lead to protect. For the Cubs in the sixth, they score three runs. They do it on three hits, the one error, and there was one left. So we go to the seventh. It's six to two in favor of the Cubbies. Pirates have their work cut out for them. Manny Sanguian will start off as Sanguian, Oliver, and Hebner at heart of the order. Two up. Sanguian is two for three. 4-9, and that's going to be a fly to right field put away by Cardinal. One down, and that will send up Al Oliver. Two seven for Oliver, and that's a 1-19 to single, so that will work. Al Oliver gets his first hit of the game. He reaches. And in a 6-2 game in the 7th, they're not going to hold him on. I don't think he's going to try to run himself out of an inning, so they will not hold him on. Here's Hebner. 6-4 against a lefty. That's a walk, straight-up walk. So that's going to put two on. Maybe Ferguson Jenkins starting to tire a little bit. This is his fatigue inning. One more batter, and he'll be around the precipice of fatigue. So the, the Cubs, rather, have got some action down in the bullpen. They have made a motion to the bullpen for some activity down there. And let's see who they're going to turn to out of the pen. Their closer is Locker, so they're not going to use him that much. Jack Aker, actually, a right-hander, is loosening in the pen. Actually, that kind of a committee bullpen. So Aker is loosening just in case Fergie starts to tire. All right, so nothing on the Havoc. Runners at first and second, one out, infield, double play depth, nobody being held on. 6-3, and that's a ballpark home run right here. He's got no more power. That's a one. It is long, and it is gone. Bob Robertson just crushes a three-run bomb, the old Earl Weaver special. It's a three-run homer, and the lead is cut to 6-5 to five just that quickly, and just that quickly the Cubs are looking to bring in a relief pitcher as soon as they can. Jenkins is now tired, so they need to get him out of there. Even though it's a lefty coming up, they only got one lefty in the bullpen. That's LaRoche. He wasn't necessarily all that good this year, so they are going to go to Jack Aker. It is now a 6-5 to five ball game. Pirates are behind Bob Robertson have done the deal. 
Milt May is your batter. But that's going to be it for Fergie. He's going to go, going to go six and a third. He can still win it because they have the lead, six to five, but he can't lose it. But he, the bullpen has to hold on for him to get the win. Nelson Browse looking for another run from the Pirates to get him off the hook. So Jack Aker is your batter, or your pitcher, rather. 5-7 to Milt May, and that is a 1-7 to seven single. That's a 15, though, so it's grounded to first. Pepitone will do the deal himself, and there's two down for Dave Cash. Cash, your batter, against Aker. 3-12, and that's a walk. So the inning continues as they walk Cash. And that brings up Gene Alley, who is 2-for-2 two two with a walk. Cash will be held. Remember, he doesn't have a good steal rating, but if you don't hold him on, then he gets a 13, and that can be dangerous. So they're, not, they're, they're definitely going to hold him on. Just be realistic. Aker, one possible wild pitch, but his wild pitch rating is a zero, so no wild pitch. We drive on. We get a 6-2. Alley a righty. 6-2 is a ground ball to third. He's not tired, so the ground ball is good. So five to four fielder's choice. That will end the inning. But the three-run bomb from Bob Robertson did the damage. Cuts the lead to six to five. Three runs on just two hits. No errors and one left. We go to the seventh inning stretch here in Wrigley. And we're getting a Wrigley-type game. The Pirates have hit three, three home runs. All their runs have come on homers. This one was a three-run shot from Robertson. And the lead is now cut to six to five. Ramon Hernandez is set to lead off next inning, so they want to get him through this inning if possible and then pinch hit for him. He's going to be facing Pepitone, Santo, and Cardinal. Four, five. I didn't even stretch for the seventh inning stretch. I just want to get the game going. So four, five against the lefty is a strikeout. One away. In your mind's eye, you can take a seventh inning stretch break if you like. So Ron Santo is your batter. Cubs clinging to a 6-5 to five lead. Ramon Hernandez trying to keep it close and keep it that way. 1-4. It's a ground ball to third, and Hebner makes the play. 1-4 left-handed, ground ball to third. Two down for Cardinal. We get a 4-7 right-handed. That's a strikeout for Ramon Hernandez. So Ramon Hernandez did the job, retired all four batters he faces. He goes an inning and a third, gives up nothing. But now he's got to come out for a pinch hitter. As we go to the eighth inning, Aker's still in the game. He has a high relief rating of three, so he's you know this is not 2022, you know. So... Ramon Hernandez is done for the day as they have to have a pinch hitter to try to get the offense going. And we look at the Pirates bench. You got Wilbur Stargell sitting there, but you'd like to save him for a, more of a clutch situation. So they're going to use, actually, they're going to use Richie Zisk, even though it's righty versus righty. They're going to use Richie Zisk to pinch hit. They want to save Stargell possibly for something better. So we start at the top of the eighth. And it will be Zisk, your pinch hitter, against Aker. 6-5 Cubs, top of the eighth. Aker to Zisk. 3-9, and Zisk with an RBI, with a, not an RBI single, but a leadoff single for Richie Zisk. He does the job. Not a very good base runner. They might use a pinch runner here. They got a deep bench, so they could do so. They do have a really good runner. Really good runner in Gene Kleins. So they're going to bring in Gene Kleins to pinch run for Richie Zisk. He does run at a 17, and he's got some good stealing chances here, so they will have to hold him on. So Gene Kleins is your pinch runner. Kleins will be the pinch runner. So they will have to hold him on. And Davileo is stepping up to the plate. He's 0 for 4. Struck out last time up. He's 0 for 4. Yeah, uh, Brian, I wanted to save uh, Stargell for the ninth inning if possible. 
So that's why I use Zisk. He's a 320 hitter. And Coggin is a switch hitter, but he's terrible. So Zisk was my best opportunity. Aker now 5-5 five, five to Davalia. That's a fly to left, one away. And Davalia was now 0 for 5 from the leadoff spot. Here comes Manny Sanguin. That might have been a chance. Maybe I should have used Stargell as a pinch hitter right there, but didn't do it. Too late now to worry about it. Here comes Aker to Sanguin. 5-5, five, five, and that is a strikeout. He's not tired yet, so the strikeout is good. Two down, and Al Oliver is your batter. Again, LaRoche in the pen is a lefty, but he's not very all that great, so they're going to stick with Aker. One chance for a wild pitch, but again, he's a zero, so we keep on. 5-10 against the left-hander is a catcher X. That is Hunley. Hunley is a 2-E3. Two and a 17 should be easy peasy. Let's check it out. Two and a 17 for the catcher is a G2. And that's a nine. And he's an E3. There is no nine, so it's just a G2. But realistically, with two outs, the, the throw would normally go to first base. So we're just going to call it a 2 3 put out, not a 2 4 fielder's choice. It's a 2 3 put out to end the inning. So Aker did his job. He'll be coming out because he's going to be pinch hit for. So Aker gives up one hit, no runs, one hit, no errors, and one left. So we go to the bottom of the eighth. Still five to four. I'm sorry, six to five, rather. Six to five. And a new pitcher for the Pirates will be coming on. And a new pitcher for the Cubs will be coming in the ninth. And that'll be their closer. And let's see, I believe it's Bob Locker. Yep, Bob Locker is loosing in the pen. Bob Locker will be coming in to pitch for the, in the ninth inning for the Cubs. Bob Locker. But the Pirates need a pitcher for the eighth. To try to keep it close. It's going to be Hunley, Kessinger, and a pinch hitter. So let's see who they want to go to here. Justy is their closer, so you wouldn't necessarily use Justy. Uh, they could use Bob Johnson. He's pretty decent. So we're going to go with Bob Johnson. He will be the new pitcher coming in for the Pirates. And I forgot to scratch off Aker, and now Locker will be coming in too. So, All right. Hunley hit the big home run his last time up, facing Bob Johnson. 3-6. He's going to pop into third, and Mr. Hebner is there. One down for Don Kessinger and the pinch hitter coming up. And we'll have to see who that's going to be. They don't really have a whole lot on the bench that's very good as far as I can tell. 3-6 is a ground ball to second. Cash is there. Two down. So let's look at the Cub bench and see what they've got in the way of pinch hitting. Gene Heiser, a lefty, is a 174. Popovich is 236. Garrett's 222. Hickman is 244. Actually, their best hitter by average is Carmen Fan Zone. So we're going to go go with Carmen Fan Zone just because the lefties are terrible. So Fan Zone will be the pinch hitter. Two out space is empty. It probably doesn't matter anyway. But that's what they'll do. Fan Zone. Johnson to Fan Zone. We get a 6-8, and that's a strikeout. So it didn't matter either way. 6-8 would have been an out for a lefty as well. So the only difference was a strikeout versus the pop-out. Three up and three down. Bob Johnson gets them one, two, three in the eighth. So now the Cubs will turn to the bullpen. Bob Locker will be there to try to wrap it up. And on the 73 season, he was 10 and 6 with 16 saves. I'm sorry, 18 saves. And a 2-5-4 ERA. So Bob Locker trying to lock it up for the Cubbies. Due up for the Pirates is Hebner, Robertson, and May. And But you do have Stargell sitting there on the bench, potentially ready to come in to pinch hit for somebody. Might pinch hit for Milt May if the bases are empty. So here's Hebner. Locker to Hebner, 3-11, and that's a solid double straight out, clean as can be. 
311 for Richie Hebner. He gets things started the right way for the Pirates. If you're a Pirate fan, 311 is a solid double for Richie Hebner. And here comes Bob Robertson, the batter. Richie Hebner might be the star of the game. He's already homered and walked and scored. And now he doubles to start the ninth. Here's, he will, let's see if he's going to be held on. I doubt it. They might even go to a pinch runner here because that's a tie and run. So let's look at the bench for the Pirates and see who they might use as a pinch runner. They used Kleins to run before. Coggin does run at a 14. Havner's a 12. Let's see who else they might have. Jackie Hernandez is actually a 14 as well. But they're going to go with Coggin. They're going to use Chuck Coggin as a pinch runner for Richie Hebner. So Richie Hebner has been removed from the game for a pinch runner. And if they need if it goes extra innings, they have Fernando Gonzalez who can play third. They have Fernando Gonzalez that could play third base if it goes extra frames. But right now, Chuck Coggin, pinch runner at second base. So he will be held because he runs at a 14. They don't want to get that jump. So he will be held. Will Mr. Coggin. Blocker's got to regroup against Bob Robertson. That's a 5-7, and that's a 1-13 to single, but that's a 15. It's a ground ball third base A. So just to be on the safe side, I'm pretty sure he's got a hold, but we'll check it anyway just to be official. Infield back, runner on second, ground ball A is a 6. He says if hit to first or second, the batter advances, but in this case they do not. So he's got a hold. So Bob Robertson couldn't hit it to, to the right side the way he wanted to. And instead, he grounds it to short. I'm sorry, grounds it to third for out number one. That brings up Milt May. Cash is on deck. Again, you still got in the hole in their back pocket, you got Willie Stargell as a potential. And you wonder if they would bring him in right now. Milt May is one for four. He's a decent hitter, but not great. They might go ahead and pull the trigger here, and then you force the Cubs to decide whether you want to put the potential winning run on base with an intentional walk or not. Stargell has all those home run chances, so he will pinch hit for Milt May as the Pirates are pulling out all the stops. Willie Stargell going to pinch hit for Milt May. And let's see who would catch in his stead. Make sure I got a catcher on the bench. Oh, well, Sanguin's the other catcher. He would move. Sanguin would move to catcher. Davalia would move to right field, and Stargell would stand again to play left field. That's what would happen if if we get it to extra innings. So Stargell pinch hitting in a big way. Now the question is, do you walk Stargell intentionally, set up a double play, take the bat out of his hands, but he is the potential potential winning run, or go-ahead run, not a winning run, but a go-ahead run. What does the peanut gallery say? Do you walk Stargell intentionally as the go-ahead run? Or do you pitch to him and or do you bring in the lefty LaRoche to pitch to him? There's all kinds of opportunities. Are there any Cubs fans here that want to chime in? Pitch to him. Okay, we're going to pitch to him, RJL. We will pitch to him. Maybe carefully. Nothing on the Havoc roll. McKenna says walk. Joel says walk him. RJL says pitch to him. So I don't have a decider die in front of me. We're just going to go ahead and pitch to him and take our chances. 112, and that's a split chance on the super advanced. One to nine's a single. That's a six. It would be a single, but only one star. So the runners are now on the corners. Pinch hit single for Willie Stargell. He will not be held. But now runners are on the corners with only one out. And Dave Cash is your batter. Locker's going to stay in there. Infield is staying back for the double play. They want to try to turn two and get out of this and try to end the ball game. Although Cash runs well, you know what? They're going to play the infield in. They're not going to take any chances. They don't want a ground ball B letting a runner in. So they're going to play the infield in and take a chance something doesn't go through. So Locker to Cash with the infield in. That's a 1-4, and that's a ballpark single check on a 1-4.
That is a eight. The single is one to eight for a right-hander. That is an eight, I believe. Yes, it is. So it will be a single. How about that? He does single in the last number available. That one eight to one four ballpark single and singles in Wrigley Field on a bad day for right-handers weather-wise. One to eight. So that does fit, and we got a tie ball game. Tie ball game thanks to Wrigley Field. Dave Cash singles to score Hebner, and now it takes the win away from Jenkins. It takes the loss off the shoulders of Nelson Bryles, and now it's a ball bullpen game. So runners are at first and second with one out. Gene Alley is your batter. Then we'll need a pinch hitter for the pitcher. Locker's going to stay in there to face Alley. Infield double play depth. 6-7, righty on righty. 6-7 uh, is a strikeout. He's not tired yet, so the strikeout is good. One away. And now we need a pinch hitter for the Pirates. Uh, two away, rather, not one away. We need a pinch hitter for the Pirates. Who was left on the bench that's any good? We got Rennie Stennett. Rennie Stennett's a 242 hitter. He might be the best thing they have left. Fernando Gonzalez is 224. Jack Hernandez is 247. Boy, who do you but Stennett's got a little more power. And he's a little bit better against righty. Well, actually, neither one of them are that great against righties. They're actually going to bring up Jackie Hernandez to pinch hit. He's a 247 hitter. So Jackie Hernandez will do the pinch hitting for the pitcher. Johnson. So Jackie Hernandez is on to pinch hit to try to bring home the go-ahead run against Bob Locker. Nothing going on here. 6-10, righty on, I uh, guess the righty is a ground ball shortstop X. That is Mr. Kessinger. He's a 2-E-31. He's not responsible for holding anybody, so he keeps the 2. It's a 2-E-31. And that's a 7. A 2 and a 7 is a G-2. Good enough. That's a 9. The question is, does he make the play? E-31 and a 9 is good. There is no play there. It's a G-2. It's going to be a fielder's choice. 6-4 to four to end the inning. But the Pirates tie it on the single from Dave Cash. They do it on three hits. One run on three hits, no errors, and two left. So we go to the bottom of the ninth, tied at six apiece. Now we need some administrative things here. Sanguian's going to take over as catcher. Davalio will move from right field to I'm sorry, from left field to right field. And Stargell, who came in and hit for Milt May, will now be the new left fielder. Willie Stargell. All right, so that's what we're looking at. Pirates still have Gonzalez and Stennett on the bench. Cubs have a lot of guys on their bench still. And let's see. Pirates will need a new pitcher in place of... And that's all for Locker as well. He's done. So now the Pirates need a new pitcher. Coming up for the Cubs, it'll be the top of the order. Monday, Beckert and Williams. So two out of three are lefties. So who do you go with? They could go with Rooker or Walker. Both of those are left-handers that are kind of starters and relievers at the same time. Rooker is mainly a starter, but he did pitch in relief, and he's not scheduled to start for you know anytime soon. So Jim Rooker is actually going to be in the game, and he can obviously give him quite a few innings. So Rooker is on to pitch here in the bottom of the ninth against Rick Monday with the score tied. Score tied at six. Bottom of the ninth, tied at six. Jim Rooker to Rick Monday. 2-5 for Monday is a solid single to lead things off. Rick Monday, a leadoff single. And for Monday, that's his second hit of the game. He, he, they're going to hold him on because they're going to have to. They don't want to give him that 15 for free, so they're going to hold him on. He won't try to go anywhere, but they will have to hold him on. And Beckert is your batter. Beckert is three for four, three singles. Infield double play depth, looking to turn two. To 1-6, and that is a double 1-16. to 16.
That is a double, but it's two stars. So the runner Monday has to stop at third. There's no option to move up. But runners are at second and third with nobody out. And they will intentionally walk Billy Williams to load the bases. That's almost a no-brainer. Don't want Willie B Billy Williams to beat you. So now they got Joe Pepitone up there with the bases loaded and nobody out. Infield obviously has to come in. I guess pretty much the outfield has to, everybody has to come in, right? <laughs> so bases are loaded, nobody out. Jim Rooker in trouble. That's an understatement. Against Pepitone. 1-9 against the lefty. It's all over right there. Pepitone with a double. What's considered a double, but with the, it really turns into a single because once the run on third scores, the game's over. And the Cubs walk it off. Joe Pepitone, RBI single. It's going to end the ball game. Jim Rooker didn't get anybody out. Pitched to four batters and gave up everything. So for the Cubs, th that run on three hits, and they left them loaded, but technically. But there's your ball game right there. Cubbies win it by a score of 7-6 to six as they walk off the Pirates in the bottom of the ninth after blowing the lead. Winning pitcher is actually Jack Aker. I'm sorry, it's Bob Locker as he was the one in the game that gave up the... He lost the save but got the win, basically. And you're Pepitone getting the RBI single, but boy, you can make a case for a lot of guys being player of the game here. It's kind of a tough call as to who you pick as your favorite player of the game. Uh, let's total up the hits here. I'm looking at the Cubs lineup, and boy, I tell you what, Beckard's got to be your player of the game. He's got he had he was four for five, and he had that double to got that got everything going. So I'm giving the player of the game to Glenn Beckard. He was four for five. Glenn Beckard four for five, three singles and a double. And although he didn't score any runs or drive in any runs, he certainly uh, well he did drive in one. One run. He drove him. He drove in one run with a single. Actually, yeah, he drove in one run. No, he drove in two runs. I take it back. He's got two RBIs. So, yeah, he's definitely getting the player of the game. Let's do the line score for the Pirates. How many hits they had? Three. So the winning pitcher was Locker. Losing pitcher was Rooker. We got that established. Now let's do the hits. Three, four, five, seven, nine, ten, thirteen. I've got them for thirteen hits. I know they had two errors. Six runs, 13 hits, and two errors. Check out the Cubs. Cubs had no errors, I don't believe. I don't see any errors on the Cubs in this one. They did have seven runs scored. Let's see, hits one, two, that's it, six, seven, ten. I got them for 13 as well. These are unofficial because I'm doing them in a hurry. Left on base, two, four, five, six. Nine left on by the Cubs. Pirates, three, five, six, eight, nine, ten. I got them for 11 left on base. So the Pirates left 11 guys on base. 11 guys left on base. There's your final line score. Cubs win it by a score of seven to, th seven to six. Seven runs, 13 hits, no errors, and nine left for the Cubs. Six runs, 13 hits, two errors, and 11 left for the Pirates. Winning pitcher, Bob Locker. Losing pitcher, Jim Rooker. Player of the game, Glenn Beckert. Next Saturday, we will be at Oakland Coliseum as the Baltimore Orioles will be the opponent against those Oakland A's of Charlie Finley. And it will be Jim Palmer against the late Ken Holtzman. So kind of a... Kind of a... Uh, what do you call it? Kind of a, uh, now I've lost the word for when it's something. Belated, I guess is the right word for it. A belated tribute game to Ken Holtzman. And, of course, batting cleanup for those Oakland A's will be Mr. Hot Dog himself, Reggie Jackson. So looking forward to that. Orioles and Athletics next Saturday from the Coliseum. Uh, keep in mind, Monday will be payoff pitch. Manic Monday will begin. It will be pre-recorded as a premiere at noon Eastern. For you lunchtime folks to try to enjoy, possibly. So it'll be the Rick Mundy American flag saving game in Dodger Stadium between the Cubs and the Dodgers. I wanted to do it I wanted to do it in, in APA, but I've got an old that's an old APA set that I have. It doesn't have all the players. 
And of course, it's missing the starting pitcher, Steve Stone, so I can't use that. So I'm using, I'm going to use Apple for another game, and we'll use uh, Payoff Pitch for the 1976 game between the Cubs and the Dodgers from Dodger Stadium. And I, I will try to play Payoff Pitch in that game more basic, so I will use the fast action cards. I won't play it the way I, know, I like to play it myself. I'll play it the more traditional way with with the fast action cards. Um, so, and I kind of want to do everything kind of, I'm going to do APA basic when APA comes around, I'm going to do everything as basic as I can on these manic Mondays, just to keep things simple and show off those games to everyone and see if they enjoy them. Thank you, Chuck. Thank you, Larry Harris. Thank you, Jeff, Jeffrey Gudeman. Thank you, uh, Robert, RJL, Tim Clee, baseball fan, Kenyon Gray, Tuscuni. Uh, anybody else I may have missed earlier that's in the chat that I've i got to scroll up and see who's here, or who was here, I should say. Uh, Brian B., don't want to forget Brian B. And let's see who else was kind enough to join us. PFLQR. And I think that Jimmy Jam, sorry, Jimmy Jam, if I missed you as well. So I think that's everybody. I, that's why I don't like doing live games, live streams, because I, I ultimately will forget people. Or miss something in a chat and and miss somebody and I don't want to offend anybody. So I do appreciate you guys tuning in and enjoying this ball game with me. Fortunately, we had a good game where we had a walk off. So that's always interesting to have. If I look at last week's game between the Red Sox and Yankees, that was also a walk off as Ron Bloomberg got an RBI single. So we've had two consecutive walk-off wins in the game of the week. Of course, the first game of the week, it was all about Mr. Willoughby and going to a place called Willoughby where he did push, 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 push. And uh, I'll tell you what, if you have not seen that episode of the Twilight Zone, that is one of the better episodes they have. I went and watched it uh, the other day just to watch it again. I've seen it so many times, but it's so good. Uh, tripped, uh, a place called Willoughby, or I think it's the official title. And uh, it's really interesting. Of course, at the end, when they put him in the uh, hearse, the, it, the name of the funeral home is Willoughby Funeral Home. So that's kind of interesting, too. But it's about a guy who's basically in corporate pressure and he just can't take it anymore. And he wants to get away back to the days of 1888. I think it was 1899 or 1889, something like that. Uh, and, of course, it was made in 1960, so he's trying to get back. So it's kind of like us trying to get back to 1960 because that was about a 60- or 70-year difference. So it would be like us trying to get back to the 50s or the 60s. He was trying to get back to the 19th century when things were not so stressful, and uh, he kept dreaming about this place called Willoughby, and then finally he decided to get off the train and uh, and go there and pursue his dream, and that's kind of the way it went. So if anybody hadn't seen it, I don't want to spoil it too much, but it is a great episode of the Twilight Zone. Great acting in there as well. So that's going to do it from here. i got some chores to do around the house. Again, next Saturday, like I said, I do have a family commitment. I will not be here physically in the house on Saturday afternoon, so I will record this on Friday and do a premiere at 12 o'clock. Uh, it'll be a premiere, A's and the uh, Baltimore Orioles. So it'll be probably the last one of the last times I'm, I'm not going to be here live, but this particular Saturday, I do have that one commitment, so I will not be here for that, just to give you a heads up. And again, Monday, coming up in two days, it'll be start of Manic Monday. It'll be payoff pitch, Cubs and the Dodgers, 1976. I believe it was April 25th, 1976. That was the Rick Monday game where the protesters were trying to burn the flag, and he took the flag away from them. And you, know, you can read up all about it all you like, I assume. And then to go along with that, starting in the first Friday in May, it'll be Fictional Friday, and that's where the Buffalo Bees will be back for another season of History Maker Baseball, and the announcers, Kip Scary, Rodney Robinson and Kip Scary, will be back with all their antics to try to entertain and, and be silly and be creative, and I'll try to be as creative as I can. I've got some new ideas for new advertisements and new things to put on the radio show of uh, Hive Talking, don't forget, is the pregame show, Hive Talking. So, Buffalo Bees, that'll be coming up on the first Friday in May. So, let's go from here. Cubs walk it off, win it 7-6. to six. Thank you all for spending part of your Saturday morning or afternoon now with me. Uh, 
And uh, until next time, be sure to check out all the other great channels that are putting out content like RJL Network, Tim Clee, Baseball Fan, Jeffrey Guterman, of course, with his Stratomatic Network, 1969 games. And uh, if there's anybody I missed that's in the chat right now, I apologize, but that's the, the guys I'm thinking of off the top of my head. And until next time, enjoy playing whatever game you choose to play, however you choose to play it, and I will see you all down the road.